Well, good morning today, and welcome to our webinar. This will be our fourth in a series for municipalities discussing workflows, getting automated data in from the field, and uh, processing and making sense of that data. My name is Steve Combe. I'm with Frontier Precision. I'm the Water Resources Section Manager. With us today in presenting are Jacob Wittenberg with Frontier Precision. Jacob is our Geospatial Technical Services Advisor. And also presenting today is Brett Rudy with CityWorks. Brett is the Regional Sales Manager um, in the West for CityWorks. We'll have all of our um, attendees muted today to minimize uh, background noise and disturbance. And we will address questions at the end of the presentation. And we'd ask that you submit those questions using the question pane over on the right-hand side of the um, panel. So if you have questions that we don't address through the webinar, um, please type those in. And at the end of the webinar, I'll read those aloud so everyone can hear those. And we'll have those questions addressed by Jacob and Brett. So we'll go ahead and pass the uh, presentation over to Jacob Wittenberg. Go ahead, Jacob. Hey, welcome everyone. So today is going to be very exciting. So um, uh, I'll do a little bit of an introduction first on, uh, I guess, the big topic of the day is going to be about data, right? And how we can enable our data to be actionable. So I want to talk about that a bit and, you know, a little bit of an introduction. Frontier Precision has been your, you know, partner for over 30 years, helping clients all over the country um, with helping them plan, design, and implement Esri GIS technology. So this is kind of a staple for us. In addition to this, we also offer mapping hardware. Um, we're a Trimble business partner. So in addition to um, being one of the largest geospatial dealers in the United States, in the world, um, we're also a Trimble water uh, business partner as well, offering uh, solutions for managing uh, water systems. So with that, um, one of our unique expertise is bringing GIS data to the field. So to get started, I want to dive deeper into the topic of data and how we can GNS GIS enable uh, your data for action. So every community has multiple sources of existing data, many of which are still dispersed and not connected. That goes for many agencies who uh, use GIS data today, whether it's big or small. Um, and for example, uh, many agencies have historical records that may be required to recall on events, past project details, or just need access for general business purposes. But how accessible is that data? Um, how can we start seeing different patterns and changes over time if it's just all filed away in a file cap? Or how about staff members who've worked at a community for 15 to 20 years and they carry an infinite wisdom and knowledge of where your assets are and they know all the details and relevant information about maintenance records and things like that that have been completed, but how does that knowledge transfer to the people who need it for making decisions? Same with spreadsheets. I don't have to get into that. We all have an overabundance of them um, that we utilize every day. But how accessible is that data? Um, and is columns of data the best way to visualize that information? Paper workflows, such as inspections and work orders and surveys, um, how much time and effort can be removed um, and, and uh, can be removed by removing the redundancy of paperwork. Um, oftentimes, paperwork is just filled out and then it's actually entered into a database elsewhere later. So we're doing dual entry of that information oftentimes. Um, map books and wall maps are great for seeing the big picture as a quick reference, but they can be limited. We view these without a relational tie to any other data sources oftentimes. And they're only as good as the data that was available when they're printed. So oftentimes they get out of date very quickly and that they're no longer relevant. Um, we work with many agencies who have CAD maps and as built data. Um, this data is great reference, uh, is a great reference, but it doesn't always reflect exactly um, how things were built. Um, even though it's called as built, sometimes it can be misleading. Um, changes that have been made over time aren't always reflected. Um, instantaneously, it can take a while to get these updated. Um, oftentimes, missing the exact coordinate locations for finding assets and infrastructure later. 
So those can be challenges. Um, lastly, most communities, especially of scale, most likely have business systems in place to help manage some or all different types of data. Some of these can be simple in nature, or I've seen some that are so complex that they actually lose value by being slow or overly complicated. Or they're a duplicate effort in multiple different departments um, of the same processes. So uh, kind of just creating more work, essentially, or doing more work, um, but not really reaping the benefit of it. So again, this is not all inclusive of all different types of data. There's also IoT devices providing real-time information and things like that. I guess the big picture is we all have data and how can GIS help enable or how can GIS help enable our data to put it in the hands of those who need it? So that's what we're going to talk about next. So using GIS as a system of records uh, has a significant benefit and then it can centralize our data storage and we can easily track the integrity of our data. So knowing what and where that data is at is important, but also knowing the value of that data, right? Is it the latest data available? You know, am I working with the most current data set? Is it the best quality data set that I have available? So having metadata information and having an understanding of the quality of data is important. Um, also, in addition to location information, we can tie other records from multiple sources together and connect data to make it easier to search and find what we're looking for. Lastly, if GIS is our system of records, we can engage with our data using WebGIS, puts the information in the hands of everyone who needs access to it, which we'll take a look on the next slide. If GIS is our system of records, we need a connection method to bring that data um, to those people who need it, right? Whoever needs access to that data. Essentially, we need a portal to get the data out of GIS that allows us to share and connect the data with our organization, whether that be management needing to see the live updated inf project information um, for making decisions or sending data and information to the field, field staff to be able to locate and find infrastructure or maybe it's just a way to connect with our community and share vital information with um, those living in our community uh, about what's happening at our city or our community. So the ArcGIS online platform provides the scalability, provides the flexibility, and it provides the power to start engaging with your data. So when sending GIS to the field, staff can easily locate assets, they can update location information with high accuracy positioning, but best of all, that data that's edited, um, the updates are instantly seen in the alphas on web maps and on, and on dashboards and things like that, but it's also seen by their field staff as well. So everybody is viewing and seeing the exact same data and information in real time. So that's the power of, engage, power of engagement with your system of records, right? So if we have GIS working um, as a system of engagement like this, everybody is working from the same common data set and from the latest information that's always available. So in the office, we can see and view GIS data like we've never been able to see before. Um, that's one of the beauties of um, technology, right? So technology has improved a lot. We can both see this in two-dimensional, but also three-dimensional. This provides a lot of visualization with our data and brings up some unique capabilities on how we can work with our data. However, there are still many business challenges, processes, and operations that can take advantage of this data. Um, how, you know, things such as asset and operation management, um, permitting processes, tracking those, and a lot more. So with that, I want to talk about something very exciting to us. So how can Frontier help put your data to work and improve your operational effectiveness? Well, this is why I'm so excited to announce our new partnership between Frontier Precision and CityWorks, as now we can not only help you GIS enable your data, but help you put that data to work to start moving or to start solving business problems with data intelligence. Um, with that, I'm going to pass the presenter mode over to Brett, who's going to talk about how CityWorks can uh, be implemented as your system of action. Oh. 
Okay. I should be able to go screen. Okay, so you should be able to see my screen now. Thanks, Jacob. Um, yep. the, you can see your screen. Can hear yourself. Okay, perfect. So um, I, I appreciate the opportunity to, to present about CityWorks today uh, alongside Jacob and, and Steve with Frontier Precision. Um, we're excited for uh, a, a new partnership with a new business partner. Um, for those of you who don't know, CityWorks is a company we've been around for 26 years, and we are part of the Trimble organization. Um, as uh, Jacob mentioned, uh, Frontier Precision is a, is a business partner um, of, of Trimble. Uh, we're owned by Trimble, so we're part of a publicly traded company. Um, because of that, we always have a little bit of uh, legal requirement to give you our safe harbor statement. So this is, uh, we're going to show you some demonstration today. It's really for, for information purposes only. Um, this wouldn't be any part of any kind of contract or anything like that. So as Jacob mentioned, the really, as you start your investment into GIS, many of you have probably been doing it for years, um, along with front help from Frontier Precision. Um, as well as maybe you're just kind of starting out and, and new. What we find is really every organization is, is really kind of on this journey, right? It's a technology maturity um, from the start of whether it is paper workflows and maybe you're using some spreadsheets or, or paper forms and documents, make paper, paper maps, and you're just moving into that system of record, that um, that GIS system um, and storing that. That is the fundamental uh, core to GIS as well as the fundamental core to CityWorks. Um, and then you're starting to build on top of that using work management, um, field and inventory operations, planning, asset management, really as you build along that journey from um, kind of that early stages through Real-time IoT, right? Maybe you're ready as an organization for um, IoT sensors and remote monitoring capabilities. Um, Frontier and, and CityWorks, along with Trimble, can help you um, build on those blocks. And kind of really, no matter where you're at on that journey, um, if you're just starting out on the mapping and collection road, um, or you're ready for that next step of asset and work management, or all the way to the analytics and IoT and, and some of those later stages along that maturity curve. So what I'm going to do now is just show you a really quick video. This is one of our customers. It's from the city of West Jordan, Utah. Some of you are probably familiar with it in the region. It's actually, luckily enough, the, the city I live in here in Utah. So I'm just going to play this real short. It's a two-minute little video that kind of really illustrates what we're talking about, what Jacob's presented on, and, and introduces you to CityWorks. West Jordan was incorporated in 1941. We have about 114,000 people in the city, and it's the fourth largest city in the state of Utah. When I joined the city 12 years ago, there was no asset management program, and I had a vision to change that. We had a system before that was not connected to the GIS at all. We were finding ourselves in more and more conflicts with our utility departments. When someone needed to generate a history of work on an asset, it was very difficult to access it. And you couldn't look up on a map what had been fixed or when. Very inaccurate. A lot of our maps showed water lines on the wrong side of the road. A lot of it we were just unsure of. Now we have city work in our city, and those that use it, Love it. The utilities workers became more invested in what was in the GIS. So it eliminates all guesswork or duplication of work. The fact that we can keep records of what's going on at even certain addresses. The accuracy of our maps has increased dramatically since then and continues to increase. My whole entire group becomes more system aware. Their understanding of the system has really grown. Every member of my group has an iPad. Every member of my crew takes them out on the field every day. The visual impact that GIS has is so valuable. It could be done any other way. It really helps refine um, our communication and make sure everybody is always on the same page. And if you're not sure, you can just open up the app, click on the thing, and see, okay, there's these three left to do. Let's go be productive and work on those. We keep building this database. 
And the database keeps growing and growing. We typically keep a five-year plan. And, and every year we update that five-year plan of what the infrastructure needs are going to be in certain areas of the city. Being the administrator of the city, I know how important funding is to the mayor and the city council. And so using city watch, they could show where our assets are and how those assets are being managed. And because of that, I have a good understanding of what the needs are in our city. So what we're trying to do, too, is to build as much knowledge about our infrastructure as we possibly can in city work. Okay, so great. Just quick little illustration um, showing you from here, right from the from the view of our customer on what ha how CityWorks has helped them, not only in asset management but with GIS and understanding really the health and location of their of their network. Um, intelligent asset management, right? That's the goal I think from from most organizations, um, and and really the the digital data is is really the foundation of that. Um, Understanding that the GIS is the system of record for your assets, for what you own, where it is, location. Um, that is the power of GIS. And the success of CityWorks has really been built on that for 25 years now. Um, we use the GIS system of record. We don't replicate data. We don't pull in data from the GIS into CityWorks to replicate that. It is just reading the GIS. The power of that is you've already leveraged your you know, last 5, 10 years, whatever long that is, has been working on your GIS. CityWorks really just starts to build on top of that and utilizes that investment over the years. So we're going to do um, some basic, just a basic overview demonstration. We've got about 10 minutes um, that we're going to go through and just show you some of the basic functionality and how CityWorks utilizes the GIS as part of our demo. Part of that will be using a mobile app. Um, our mobile apps are, are very a, a very powerful tool that's designed for the field staff to actually take out the work and complete that into the field. So I'm just going to start um, the, the live demonstration here. Let me escape out of the, uh, the presentation. So you should be able to now see my browser. So CityWorks is a, is a browser-based application, um, and you, you access that via the, the internet. Okay. Um, what we're looking at is a web map, right? So this is the, a, a map that's created in Esri, and it's presenting us with our, some of our water assets. Okay. Some of the basic leveraging of the GIS is we can click on something in the map. Okay. So I'm going to click on, on my map here, which is, is in the GIS. And this can circle through. I've got a couple of assets on top of each other. Um, if I, if I see there's my, my PVC pipe. And then I can also see the actual building, which is our pump station. Okay. This is just a pop up from your Esri web map. Okay, and this is pulling in all of our attributes that we're tracking in the GIS. Some of you may be very basic in some of the attributes. Some of you may be pretty robust in what you track, um, the location and address, the ownership, the condition of, a, of an asset is, is key. When it was installed, expiration, maybe it's a warranty date and you want to track some of those data. Maybe you get down to where, hey, we put a picture of the asset onto into the GIS where we can actually see what those are. Some of the additional power of GIS is also being able to store drawings um, as built, pump stations, schematics, standard operating procedures. So right from the map, I can open up the standard operating procedure from that actual pump station. So I can go through and give me instructions on how do I do maintenance activities? Uh, where, what are the different components? Um, any of that data that we want to store and track along with the asset is able to be stored right into the GIS and be accessed via CityWorks and the web map there. Okay, so let me close that and we can move over here and maybe look at it at a hydrant. Okay, so I can see one of our water hydrants. So as I click that, uh, this is just, again, the pop-up in the map. 
And I can really organize data as, as really as I want to. That's the flexibility of, of the GIS and utilizing that inside CityWorks. So we've actually grouped some, some items inside of our pop-up. Um, we've got the asset ID and the manufacturer, the location, ownership. So we've got some of the generalized asset detail. And then we're looking at asset health. What's the condition of the asset? When was that condition score created? Was it from an inspection? When was the last service date? Do we track some of the business risk and asset management components of it? What's the probability of failure, consequence of failure? All of that data should be stored in the GIS. CityWorks can help you with some of those tools in creating some of those things. We've also got the life cycle de details. Right When it went into the ground, when it was installed, a warranty date, replacement dates, ins installation costs, what an estimated replacement cost might be. All of these pieces, again, being part of the GIS and being accessed through CityWorks as part of your asset management strategy. So beyond looking at that data, we can make that actionable. Just as Jacob talked about in the beginning is how do we move from having the information to then making it actionable and starting to track and do maintenance and actually understand those pieces. And that's where the CityWorks components come into play. So if I wanna select an asset, we're just gonna select that asset that we were looking at there, and that's our hydrant. So I just used the selection tool here, part of the GIS tools, and then I selected that, and it highlights that we've got that selected. On the left-hand side of this panel, this pulls in that hydrant information. So this is the asset ID. Um, it's when it's got our displayed name. Any of those GIS attributes that we track are all here and available. I can also select this and then view that in a kind of a, in a better format. This is viewing our asset details. So again, here, this is all of my GIS data. This is pulling in not only the photo from the GIS, but also looking at the CityWorks data. So this is giving me a cost of the total cost that we've spent in maintenance activities against this asset. And that would include labor, material, and equipment costs. It also can pull in the number of hours that were actually spent on the maintenance of that hydrant. In our case, an hour, 1.14 hours has been allocated to the maintenance of that specific hydrant. And we've got $93 in costs. Now, the asset attributes from CityWorks can also be edited if we go to the bottom. And if I have permissions, I can edit some of that data. So if there was some information that was wrong, maybe the, the, the maybe this manufacturer wasn't an American darling. It was it was a, a Warner or something like that. We could actually update that and 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 really be able to track that accurate data right through CityWorks. I can also see the work history very quickly and easily. So I can see all of the inspections and all of the work orders that have been done over time against this asset. If I'm curious to find out what some of those details are, I can just hit the hyperlink here and go to that scheduled repair maintenance and actually look at what was done from the work order perspective. So from here, I can also create work. So if I wanted to create a work order, I can do that very easily. Right. We all we still have that selected and we just create a work order right there from the map. This has got our hydrant selected. We can also select multiple hydrants. So if we wanted to select five, six, 10, 20 hydrants, we can do that and include those on one work order or we could complete and create multiple work orders at the same time. Now, CityWorks is a very templated approach to maintenance and asset management. So we've got, we set up templates on each asset type. So under a template, these are the types of work that we can now conduct against an asset. In this case, a fire hydrant. So we can do things like a flow test or a flushing, an install, locate, painting, all of those different things. Okay. So in this, we're just going to put in there, we're going to do a scheduled repair. And then this can give us some details of who it's, who it's assigned to. We can create some comments. We're just going to create the work order and create that on the fly. So now we've created a work order. Work order is created in the system. We can assign it out to a field staff and they can go out and complete that work. Maybe it's a, a routine maintenance. 
Um, in this case, we selected the routine maintenance and we can set that up on a cycle so that we maintain that every six months. Maybe it's every 12 months or 13 months. We can do that as part of our work cycle and we can set this up so that we do this. Maybe it's every 18 months as part of our program. So then once we complete this work activity, the next one in the cycle can automatically create that. And now we really start to get a routine maintenance schedule built into CityWorks. So that's the, the, the browser. So that can, requires connectivity to the internet. I'm going to switch now into my, my mobile application into using my phone. So I'm going to minimize my browser and I've got my phone here. Okay. So this is just a, an iPhone. Um, CityWorks mobile can work on iOS or Android. So either one of those stores and it's designed to either use on a tablet or a phone on either of those platforms. Um, I'm going to open up the CityWorks mobile application here, click on that, and I'm presented with my map. Okay, the map has those icons, and the, the mobile application is really designed for the field staff to go out and track work. So these are these, just the assignments that are assigned out to me as a user. So I can, I can go and, and see what those are. Those are different. So the red icons are work orders. These yellow ones are service requests. And the blue check mark is an inspection. So each of those types of work we can complete right in the field. So I'm going to zoom into an area. As we start to scroll in, we can see the GIS data then starts to draw. I can see all of my water lines. If I get even further in, I can see the structures, some of the hydrants, the valves. Even further, as I scroll in, we can see the meters and the connection points, all of those different asset types. Um, on these work orders, if I just click on the work order itself, that gives me just a brief description of what that is. So this is a flushing of a, of a hydrant or a system. It could be on a water line. It probably looks like it is more so on a water line. So I can open up that work order, do the work in the field, I can track my labor, equipment, and materials. On this work order, we've already completed and tracked 10 hours of labor. We've already tracked some equipment for four hours, um, and we've already added an attachment. Okay, so we're completed with this work order. To, to complete it, all we do is at the very bottom is just slide that button to green, and that completes my work order in the field. If I go back to the map, that icon, that icon then disappears, letting me know that I'm finished and I can move on to that next work activity. I can also use and leverage some of the powers of GIS to manage some of the programs. I've developed in our GIS a, a, a really a color coding scheme letting me know about our hydrant flushing program. So our green icons are hydrants that have been flushed in the last year. The red is ones that we have not done yet this year, okay, or in the last 12 months. And that's, again, a function of the GIS. It's displaying that asset with a color coding icon so that it's very easy for me to manage. If we wanted to go in and, and actually create and, and do some work on one, of these, uh, on one of these assets, we can do that. I'm going to just use this asset here on Danforth Way right next to our our CVS pharmacy. Okay. We can see there's a couple that are, that are red and we could just say, all right, we're in the area. We need to go out and flush a couple of these hydrants. So I'm going to select this hydrant. I, to do that, I use this map layers at the bottom right hand corner. And then I make my hydrant selectable. I've already done that. I've put a check mark here in the hydrants and now I can select one of those assets. The selected, I use this selection tool here. Okay. I just click on that and then I can draw with my finger a box around that asset and that selects it. Okay. So now I've got one asset selected. Again, I can select multiple assets. I can see a, a few of those. If I wanted to look and investigate into the asset details, some of the attributes in GIS, I can click this blue bar here at the top. And that will give me access to all of my GIS attributes. Okay. I'm going to go back and create our work order for our flushing. To do that, I do that with the plus button at the bottom left hand corner and I create a work order. 
The system already knows we've selected a GIS asset. So it's from the water distribution. It's a hydrant. Now it's asking me, what is my template that we want to select? I select that field and I say, I want to flush our system. And then I create that work order. So now the work order is created. I've actually created that work order in the field. I don't have to talk, call anybody in the office. I don't have to do anything. I flush the hydrant. We're in the field. We hook up our flow. Maybe we use a flow meter and we want to track the, the flow. Whatever your process is, they do that in the field. Then we can track the labor that we did that we used. So the hours and what it took us to do that work. And to do that, all we do is select the labor field. Again, hit the plus button at the top. Our crew is already there. And we just put in the two hours that it took us to, to do that work and to flush that hydrant. I hit done. And now I've added two hours to my entire crew. I can go back to the work order. I can add an attachment. Maybe we want to take a picture while we're doing the hydrant flushing to prove that we did it. We can just use the camera on our device and we can take a photo. Well, we're going to take a picture of the snow currently falling in my, in my backyard, not actually the hydrant, but that's the, the snow falling. So we've got an attachment. We've tracked our, our hours. We can do the same thing with equipment, materials. And then you can also set up custom fields to track any amount of data that you would want to in the field. Uh, and then we can go back to the map, right? We've got the work order there. We want to complete it. Okay, so we can open up the work order again and just complete that work order, go back to the map, and that's disappeared. Now, the goal of this is we want to turn that red icon to green. To do that, we need to sync our data. Now, the CityWorks mobile app is designed to be able to be used in a disconnected mode with no internet in the field. So we can download work, we can create work in the field, and then once we get back, back to connectivity or we have internet connection, we can go ahead and sync those updates. The syncing takes maybe seven to 10 seconds to complete. What it's doing is really updating all of the work activities that we've got stored on our phone, sending those up. It updates the GIS layers and then also pulls down any new work that's assigned to my crew or to myself. It does take obviously bandwidth on the internet. So depending on your speed of your device on my phone, I use T-Mobile so you could kind of see that. So if we want to zoom back into where we were at over at the Danforth station, we can now see that that hydrant that we just flushed has now changed to green. So very basic workflow. We went out, flushed the hydrant and we've tracked the results and outcome of that program. So that's it for my presentation for, for CityWorks. Again, just some very high level uh, functionality with inside CityWorks. Um, some of the, the, the ways that we utilize the maps and GIS um, in, in your asset management journey. So with that, I think I'll turn it back over to Jacob um, and Jacob will uh, wrap things up. Hey, thanks, Brett. Yeah. All right, so before we get to questions, I just wanted to uh, cover two quick things here. And the first being um, just getting everybody aware that we are hosting a um, very large um, online um, expo actually coming up next month. So um, Friendship Precision is hosting a tech expo. This is our 2021 users conference. Um, and we're going to have not just um, representatives from front two there, but um, Brett is actually going to be doing a presentation uh, about CityWorks as well. So if you want more information, um, that, that would be a great session to attend to learn more. Um, I'll also be hosting a session about um, sharing data and information um, uh, using GIS technology. So that'll be a more of a focused uh, uh, presentation or session on that. And these are going to be live sessions. Um, they'll be recording the available after as well. But the live sessions are great because you'll be able to ask questions and interact. Um, in addition to that, you know, as you can see on the bottom here, we're going to have all types of different solutions. So if you are a GIS manager or if you do work in engineering or other departments as well, um, there is going to be quite a bit of technology, all location-based information technology um, 
uh, being presented at this uh, conference. So I definitely highly recommend. Um, you can sign up for this right on our website. And uh, yeah, I'd love to see you guys there. In addition to um, our conference that we have uh, coming up, um, Steve Comby had mentioned that we've done quite a few different webinars in the series. And so this is the last webinar of the series, but we did have quite a few on water resources. So everything from underwater ROVs um, to uh, remote monitoring, using trimble water solutions, using pipe crawlers, uh, mapping uh, manholes with uh, LIDAR to the uh, session that we just had today. And these are all available right on our YouTube channel. So our YouTube channel is just Frontier Precision. So if you search for that, all these webinars, plus a lot of other content will be there available for you as well. And then I wanted to put out a plug too, if you are in uh, attending the conference next week in St. George, Utah, it is actual, actually a in-person conference. They're not doing a virtual one, it is in person. Um, stop by, say hi, I know Steve Comby will be there and I think Brett will be there as well. Um, so you can stop in and uh, uh, be face to face um, or with a mask <laughs> talking to those guys. And so with that, I want to uh, open it up to questions. I know we've had a few pop in, so um, I'll uh, relay that back over to Steve and let him kind of uh, uh, be the uh, disc jockey of questions here. Great. Thank you, Jake. We have had a few questions come in through the course of the webinar. So let me start off with some of those. So the first one is, uh, this is a popular one all the time. What are the costs to get started with CityWorks? So Brett, we'll throw that in your lap. Yeah, so um, the cost to get started with CityWorks, the, the licensing is is a, a, the base investment um, is a, is $9,000, and that includes um, five licenses. So that can be admin, end user, field staff, um, and that's as little as, as $9,000 annually. Um, we do have uh, enterprise licenses and, and additional bundles. We can you know kind of talk individually if some folks have some questions about those. And then the project gets started, that would be, you know, Frontier Precision. And they would work on based off of your organization size and, and how many you know, users and, and what the training needs would be to develop a project for you guys to get started. So, yeah, great question. But, yeah, as little as, as $9,000 annually can get you started using CityWorks. Okay. And, Brad, this looks like another CityWorks question here. And CityWorks, are the pop-ups in the map controlled by CityWorks or NGIS? Yeah, great question. Um, so the, the, the map pop-ups that we, that we showed, right, those are configured in the web map. So those are GIS, okay? So that is all using the Esri web map pop-up um, controls. Uh, and then you obviously are, are looking at those inside CityWorks. So there's some some customization that you can do and, and really some powerful tools. We illustrated just a, a couple of them. Um, but yeah, those are all um, Esri pop-ups. But the fact that then the power of using the, the GIS from Esri, we're using the API right from the Esri web map. So you have the ability to use that right in CityWorks and display that data. Great question. Great, thank you. Uh, another question, and this, uh, Brad, is for you as well. Have you any examples of CityWorks used for water conservation programs? Um, water conservations, that's a, that's a, a, a really good one. I, I want to say the, uh, the county of King County um, does some work with their water conservation. Um, that's one that comes right off the top of my head, but we could definitely do some uh, querying of our customers. Uh, the, the flexibility of CityWorks as an enterprise application, really uh, the, the workflows are set up so that really whatever asset you're managing, whether it's a stream, a river, a tank, a pump station, right? Whatever those assets are, are all worked and managed through CityWorks. Um, if it's an inspect, you know, you can use an inspection to do quality testing. Um, I know King County does that when they go out and do their, their wallet water quality testing, they use an inspection. Um, and those are just templates that can be configured. 
um, right with inside the application and used and, and utilized how the organization needs that to be done. So um, it can be yes. Examples, I could get back to whoever that asked that question for sure. Okay. We could do some more follow-up with that. Uh, the next one, uh, Jake, this is probably in your wheelhouse. I manage our water department and we have GIS, but don't use ARC GIS online. How do we get started? So maybe you can speak to that. Yeah, absolutely. And so if you're using Esri um, ArcGIS already and your maintenance is current, most likely you already have access to ArcGIS online. And so with that, that would give you one named user account to be able to go in and start creating web maps, publishing data, things like that. And so the bigger picture, though, would be is, you know, what do you want to use it for? What are the applications and things that you want to actually use ArcGIS online for. And some of that might be unknown to you today, but that's where we can come in and help um, plan out strategy for how you're going to do that. We also offer jump starts for agencies to get started and get going with ArcGIS online. And then from that, we can also help plan out, you know, what types of users do you need? Do you need viewer accounts, creator accounts, editor accounts? There's a couple of different types of accounts and we can help, help you strategize um, the best plan to go forward with, with using that technology. So yeah, the easiest way would be, you know, um, using your account that you already have if you have access to it. And if not, you know, working with IT to figure out maybe um, how to get access to it. And then from there, um, you know, if you need further assistance, we can certainly help you. Yep. Great. Thank you, Jake. It looks like we have just one more question. And Brett, I think this is directed to you, the uh, question is, and I assume this is speaking of City Works. This seems very similar to the federal FAMS system, just improved with Esri and other platforms. Is that correct? Um, I'm not familiar with the federal FAMS system, um, but but City Works has been a an application that's been developed. Um, over 20, almost 26 years now. Um, I don't know what, what uh, I, yeah, I don't, I'm not familiar with FAM, so I couldn't probably answer that adequately. Okay, I'm, I'm not either. Um, Jake, <laughs> anything on your end? Yeah, I'm not familiar with it specifically either, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm not sure exactly. Okay. Great. I just scanned our question pane, and I think that is all of the uh, questions that have come in. So I thank you for your attendance today. The software will automatically send out a follow-up email that has a couple survey questions and will send an additional email that has a link to a recorded version of the webinar. So if you need to Share that with uh, colleagues in your office or associates or just view it again yourself. You will get a link to our YouTube channel where you can view today's webinar as well as the previous ones that Jacob referred to in the previous slide. So thank you very much again for your attendance, and we hope to see you again soon. And please remember our Tech Expo as well. Have a good day. Bye.